Yeah, these look like shit. So at this point in time, I just finished up filming part 7 of my Pontiac Fiero restoration series. In that episode, I got the drivetrain bolted back up in the car after rebuilding it, and restored the rear suspension. So with all that done, the car is practically brand new mechanically speaking, at least for the back half of the car. To help mitigate the front half's jealousy, I want to take care of it too. Now, I will say that 90% of this is essentially the same thing as what I already did in the rear. I'm man beast. So if you're interested in the other 10% or you're just a weirdo that likes hearing my voice, this is the video for you. The main differences are that the rear had a single lower control arm with a McPherson strut up top on each side, and the front has two control arms and a separated gas shock and spring on each side. There's also the addition of a sway bar, braces, and a few other little things, and plus I'll be trying out some new techniques. Jesus Christ! With everything out, it's easy to see that I have a lot of work ahead of me. A lot of tedious work. So to start off with the suspension restoration, I'll start off with things that aren't part of the suspension. Like this chassis brace. The first step for this guy is the blasting cabinet. And after all the rust and paint was gone, I wiped it down with mineral spirits and did what I haven't done too much of in the past, and that's using primer. This is self-etching primer, which is supposed to be really good for bare metal. And after a few hours of drying, I gave it a good wet sanding with 400 grit sandpaper, another wipe down with mineral spirits, and then two medium coats of automotive enamel paint. Nice. Next, and the last of the braces, were the radiator support braces. They're pretty rusty, which is par for the course, of course but one of them is bent to shit, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. I tried heating it up and hammering it straight, but that wasn't working. At all. So, it was grinder time. I made a staggered cut. Two extended neighboring sides for each piece. That way I could hammer each piece straight from the inside. Yeah, that's more like it. Then I welded them together, ground down the welds, re-welded where there were holes, and then ground down everything once more. Now, body filler is absolutely 100% a waste of time here, since this is going to be hidden underneath the car where nobody but myself will ever see it, but I felt compelled to make it at least somewhat presentable. And the repair wasn't perfect. Well, it didn't result in a perfectly straight piece of metal, but it'll still be able to do its job just fine. Maybe one day, I'll replace it with one that's perfectly straight. But, not today. Now it's time for actual suspension pieces. The easiest piece is probably going to be the sway bar, since it's just a metal bar, really. As for the sway bar itself, I started out with the wire wheel on the bench grinder, but it was getting a bit awkward to do it that way, so I ended up just switching to a drill. Not as powerful or quick, but easier. And painting was the same as before. Wiped down with mineral spirits, self-etching primer, and then automotive enamel paint. Thank you. 
and next was the biggest piece of them all, and that's the subframe. It attaches to the car with four bolts on the bottom and three bolts from each side. The side mounting brackets are separable from the main subframe, so those guys were removed and restored on their own. The main subframe was obviously too big to fit into my blasting cabinet, but that's okay. Luckily, it's only a little dirty and has minimal surface rust. I was able to clean it up and go over every surface with the wire wheel on the drill. This broke up whatever loose rust there was as well as scuffed up the surface so that there would be good adhesion for the paint. And then I wiped down everything with mineral spirits to get rid of any oil or loose dust that was created in the wire wheel process. And then I gave it a couple coats of self-etching primer, and then two solid coats of more automotive enamel paint. And after it was dry, which was a few days later because it has been pretty cold, I installed the new polyurethane bump stops that I got from the Fiero store. Silicone lube and a dead blow hammer made pretty quick work of that. I won't be installing the upper brackets until it goes back on the car. Since there is some wiggle room for alignment, I want to wait until they'll be in the absolute correct spot before tightening anything down just yet. And now, for the spindles. Being so close to the wheel where dirt and other road grime get flinged around, these guys got really dirty. Degreaser and a stiff bristle brush took care of all that pretty quickly. I started knocking off the loose rust with the bench grinder, but it's such an odd shape that it wasn't working too well. So to the booth you go. And after both were clean, I masked off all the machine surfaces and gave them a good thick coat of Eastwood's Rust Encapsulator spray paint. And for the caliper brackets, which bolt onto the spindles, I had them soaking in an electrolysis bath for a few days. The rust was completely gone, but to help with paint adhesion, I gave them a quick once over with the blasting cabinet. The last pieces that attach to the spindles are the dust shields. These were pretty filthy as well, so they got the same treatment as the spindles. But this time, I used some more of the leftover silver high heat paint that I had. And with those drying, I could now bolt together the spindles and the caliper brackets. But I didn't want to do that with the bolts being so rusty, so I took them to the bench grinder to wire wheel off the loose rust, and then hit them with a couple of heavy coats of the automotive enamel paint. I then kinda got carried away and did that to every single bolt that I'll be reusing. This is a lot cheaper than buying all new hardware, and a lot simpler than replating them all myself. It probably won't hold up the second a socket has slid over any of the bolts, but it's better than doing nothing at all. Right? The brackets were installed with some blue thread locker and then tightened down. And don't worry, they were torqued to spec off camera. Now, I could install the dust shields at this time, but they probably would just get in the way during the installation process, so I'll leave them to the side for the time being. But nice, these look good. However, I think the biggest offenders here for rust and just overall showing their age are the lower control arms. They are what you call crusty. There's just so much rust over every surface, not to mention their rotted out bushings and worn ball joints. Yeah, these aren't pretty. The ball joints are a little different than the other two pairs in the car, and that's because rather than being bolted in, they are a press fit. And I've read that on early model Fieros, they were tack welded in place after being pressed in as a little extra insurance, but these appear to not have that, so that makes it easier for me. And pressing them out honestly went very smoothly, besides the fact that I lost the footage of me doing so. And I wasn't fucking recording any of that. Okay.
but after that were the bushings. A little heat was applied to them to help get things moving, and then I pressed them out slowly but surely. I said in part 7 that this process sucks, and it does, but it does get better with time. So with all these free of all subcomponents, I can now start the cleaning process. So I used electrolysis to start the process, and that did a whole lot. Pretty much all of the loose rust was taken care of, but there was still so much paint on there, so that means it's blasting cabinet time. And I realized probably way later than I should have that it's loads better to just put my GoPro looking into the window than actually putting it inside. Nice one, Ronnie. But with those now down to bare metal, they were wiped down with mineral spirits, and then I gave them two coats of self-etching primer. And then, more of the automotive enamel paint. And after those were drying for a few days, it was time for the bushings. However, these are unique to all other control arms on the car, because as you can see from this footage of the past, wait, all this footage is from the past. The bushings aren't fully pressed into the stamped metal, they are offset. So to make sure that the new ones go into the right depth, I lined up the inner collars of the old and new bushings and measured the depth of the lip to the wall of the control arm for each bushing. So back at the bushing press with a digital caliper nearby, I slowly but surely installed each one, making sure to measure the depth after each turn. With those done, it's time for the ball joints. Except that I ordered these parts over a year ago, and in that time while these were in storage, my cat peed on them. But they're better now. The parts were lined up in the press, and I started to get them in, but I was having the damnedest time. Was it the crappy tool? Maybe. Was it the udon noodles I have instead of human arms? Probably. So, I went out and bought a hydraulic press. Yeah, that was very easy. I don't know if I could have done this job without it. Not to mention that I'll be able to use it for so many things in the future. So, it worked out pretty well. So, after some touch-up paint was added where there were scuffs created in the pressing process, and after the new rubber boots were lubed up and installed, that is all of the jobs for the lower control arms completed. The upper started out the same. Ball joints removed, bushings pressed out, and lots of sandblasting. And after that was the... Yes! So Eastwood asked me if I would be interested in trying out their new elite powder coating gun system, and I said, Yes! Now I have absolutely no prior experience powder coating, so this is gonna be fun. The kit comes with the main air and electronics control box, the hopper where the powder is stored and aerated, and the gun where all the magic happens. The kit also comes with different nozzles to attach, but I think for my purposes I'll only be using this one. The kit came with a large hopper, but I didn't need one that big, plus you have to have at least 3 pounds of powder in it for it to work correctly, and I only had 2, so instead, I'll be using this smaller 2 pound hopper. To supply the unit with air, I'm just going to be using a cheap Harbor Freight Compressor, however I did build a DIY moisture trap to make sure that there's no contamination happening as the air goes down the line. To bake the parts after, I went to Facebook Marketplace and found this large countertop convection oven. There was the issue of the rack being too low to hang the parts off of, so I just welded on some steel rectangles to the edge to raise the entire thing up, and now the parts won't be so close to the heating elements. So for the unaware, powder coating is an alternative to painting. What it is, is teeny tiny plastic particles that are shot out of a gun and onto whatever part you're working on. The particles are attracted to the part because they are positively electrostatically charged as they leave the gun, and the part is grounded with a little grounding clamp, and the particles are attracted to it. There is some settings to work out to make sure everything is attracted properly, basically different voltage settings, 
but I'm not the one to ask about that. I'm still learning. Plus, Eastwood has some videos that could explain far better than I could. So after the powder starts evening out and looking glossy, the part is left in the 400 degree heat for 15 to 20 more minutes and then removed to cool. And after taking off the hooks, high temp masking tape, and doing every single step over again, you're left with two very fine looking upper control arms. And with the new bushings pressed in and the new ball joints loosely installed, they're looking pretty damn good. The very last thing to do for the front suspension is taking care of the springs. These guys are also going to get the powder coating treatment. And if you want to check out this system for yourself, there's a link down in the description. Though the Elite system that I have is honestly a little overkill for what I'm using it for. However, Eastwood has some more DIY style powder coating systems too, and I'll have links for those down below as well. But with that done, and the springs looking damn fine, that's the entire front suspension completely restored. A lot of work went into this, and I'm pretty happy with the results. For some parts, it's night and day. Others look pretty good, but mostly everything looks brand new. For the old components like the gas shocks and sway bar links, I do have replacements for those. The only thing I didn't touch just yet was the steering rack, but that will be gone through in the next main episode of the Fiero series, as well as putting these parts back on the car. So look forward to that. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.